Um, so when I was looking for something to talk about this week, um, I actually came across this tract that um, my grandma had read at a women's Bible study. Um, so it's called The Room. In that place between wakefulness and dreams, I found myself in the room. There were no distinguishing features, save for the one wall covered with small index files. Um, but these files, which stretched from floor to ceiling and were endless in, their, in either direction, had very different headings. I opened the files and read them. Um, as I drew near the wall of files, the first to catch my attention was the one that read Girls I Have Liked. I opened it and began flipping through the cards. I quickly shut it, shocked to realize that I recognized the names written on each one. And then without being told, I knew exactly where I was. This lifeless room with its small files was a crude catalog system for my life. Here were written the actions of my every moment, big and small, in a detail my memory couldn't match. A sense of wonder and curiosity coupled with horror stirred within me as I randomly as I began randomly opening files and exploring their contents. Some brought joy and sweet memories, others a sense of shame and regret, so intense that I would look over my shoulder to see if anyone was watching. A file named Friends was next to one marked, Friends I Have Betrayed. Next, the titles ranged from the mundane to the outright weird. Books I have read, lies I have told, comfort I have given, jokes I have laughed at. Some were almost hilarious in their exactness. Things I've yelled at my brothers, others I couldn't laugh at, things I've muttered under my breath at my parents. I never ceased to be surprised by the contents. Often there were many more cards than I expected. Sometimes there were fewer than I hoped. I was overwhelmed by the sheer volume of the life I had lived. Could it be possible that I had the time in my years, in all my years, to write each of these thousands, possibly millions of cards? But each card confirmed this truth. Each was written in my own handwriting, each signed with my signature. When I pulled out the file marked Songs I Have Listened To, I realized the files grew to contain their contents. The cards were packed tightly, and yet after two or three yards, I hadn't found the, the end of the file. I shut it, shamed, not so much by the quality of the music, but more by the vast amount of time I knew that file, that, that file represented. Wasted time. When I came to a file marked Lustful Thoughts, I felt a chill run through my body. I pulled the file out only an inch, not willing to test its size, and drew out a card. I shuddered at its detailed contents. I felt sick to think that such moments had been recorded. Suddenly, I felt an almost animal rage. One thought dominated my mind. No one must ever see these cards. I have to destroy them. In an insane frenzy, I yanked the file out. Its size didn't matter now. I had to empty it and burn the cards, but as soon as I took the file at one end and began pounding it on the floor, I could not dislodge a single card. I became desperate and pulled out a card only, only to find it as strong as steel when I tried to tear it. Defeated and utterly helpless, I, re I returned the file to its slot. Leaning my forehead against the wall, I let out a long, self-pitying sigh, and then I saw it. This title said, People I Have Shared the Gospel With. The handle was brighter than those around it. Newer, almost unused, I pulled on its handle, and a small box not more than three inches long fell into my hands. I could count the cards it contained on one hand. And then the tears came. I, became, I began to weep. Sobs so deep that they hurt started in my stomach and shook through me. I fell on my knees and cried. I cried from the overwhelming shame of it all. The rows of file shelves swirled in my tear-filled eyes. No one must ever, ever know of this room. I must lock it up and hide the keys. But then as I pushed away the tears, I saw him. No, please not him, not here. Oh, anyone but Jesus. I watched hope helplessly as he began to open the files and read the cards. I couldn't bear to watch his response, and in the moments I could bring myself to look at his face, I saw a sorrow deeper than my own. He seemed to go to the worst boxes. Why did he have to read every one? Finally, he turned and looked at me from across the room. He looked at me with pity in his eyes, but this was a pity that didn't anger me. I dropped my head, covered my face with my hands, and began to cry again. He walked over and put his arm around me. He could have said, 
so many things, but he didn't say a word. He just cried with me. Then he got up and walked back to the wall of files. Starting at one end of the room, he took out a file and one by one began to sign his name over mine on each card. No, I shouted, rushing to him. All I could find to say was no, no, as I pulled the card from him. His name shouldn't be on these cards, but here it was, written in red so rich, so dark, so alive. The name of Jesus covered mine. It was written with his blood. He gently took the card back. He smiled a sad smile and continued to sign the cards. I don't think I'll ever understand how he did it so quickly. But the next instant, it seemed I heard him close the file, the last file, and walk back to my side. He placed his hand on my shoulder and said, it is finished. I stood up and he led me out of the room. There was no lock on its door. There were still cards to be written. My life was not over yet. Have you ever wondered how God looks at your life? Jesus tells us that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You can find that in Matthew twelve thirty six. It's crazy to think all the things that we're going to do in our lives and all the things that we might um, do that are going to make us feel a lot of shame. But that's why we have Jesus and um, he gives his love and forgiveness so freely and his grace and it's just amazing that he can take all these things and sign his name over it and um just be the ultimate sacrifice for us um so that's all I really have um if you'd like a copy of this I'll, I can get you one um I think it's a really 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 short easy thought-provoking thing to share with somebody um great devotion um so yeah i hope you guys have a good friday and if you have any questions um or anything that you'd like to talk about about it um let me or dodger or anybody um in leadership or really anybody know so thanks